As you may already know, many of the new features of System Platform 2014 support what's called situational awareness, or high-performance HMI. Alarming is a contributing factor to operator effectiveness. There are many organizations and standards out there that discuss proper alarm management. We're probably all familiar with control rooms which have nuisance alarms. Operators will be more effective when they have alarms that are meaningful and they're directed to those alarms at the right time and with the right level of criticality. Planning and categorizing your alarms will help enhance your alarm management system. Many of these organizations have guidelines to help you categorize your alarms based on the risk associated with the abnormal condition which triggers the alarm and the loss, either environmental or financial, that the alarm unaddressed will cause. For Wonderware customers who want to implement better visualization of your alarms, the 2014 release of System Platform offers several tools. One of the new features is introducing alarm severity. This will allow you to map your current alarm priorities into four categories of severities. It's much easier for an operator to distinguish between four levels of critical alarms than the previous priorities between 1 and 999. This new feature is aligned with many industry tested standards. The colors are chosen based on their place in a color wheel such that operators with disabilities can more easily distinguish between the shades. As an added measure, each severity is given a different shape. In System Platform 2014, the configuration of alarm severities is done globally. You'll find the configuration in the IDE under the Galaxy menu, Configure, and then Alarm Priority Mapping. From this dialog, you can see each severity and the range of priorities that are associated with it. If the highest level of alarm in your plant is 999, you can choose to start the critical range at that number. And then just work your way down from there. You also have the option to choose a different image associated with each level of severity. These global settings are used by many of the new features in the System Platform 2014 release. One of those new features is alarm borders. Alarm borders are a new animation that can be added to almost any symbol. They appear as borders around symbols and have associated objects. And the configuration of this animation is very simple, especially when using objects. Again, the color of the border and the image shown in the left-hand corner are based on those global settings we looked at earlier. The display of the alarm border will change based on the highest priority of alarm from the object and whether the alarms are active or returned to normal, unacknowledged or acknowledged. Those displays all use different element styles. There's a wide range of element styles associated with alarming in the 2014 release. To learn more about how to use and configure element styles, check out some of our other videos. Here's a snapshot of many of the different styles available. You'll notice that a critical alarm is a bright red, but when that alarm has returned to normal, a faded indication appears. Now let's look at an alarm border in action. Here we're looking at the standard Wonderware Reactor demo, except I've added a new window. In the window, I simply added text with a new alarm border animations. Remember, you can add the alarm border animations to many symbols. That means if you're not ready to use all the new symbols in 2014, you might just be able to add new alarm border animations to your current symbols. The display of the alarm border helps me know at a glance what's going on with my alarms. The reactor is indicating that I have an active, unacknowledged alarm with a severity of 2, or a high severity. Once I acknowledge the alarm, the flashing animation stops because it's acknowledged, but as it's still active, the color stays bold. In contrast, the tank is showing a faded color in the alarm border, indicating that I have unacknowledged alarms that have returned to normal. Once I acknowledge these alarms, that indication will go away. Another new feature of the alarming in 2014 is aggregation of alarms. Because I've added this alarm animation and connected it to the reactor object overall, it responds to both the reactor level and the reactor temp alarms. To configure the new alarm border animation, once you're in the Orchestra Symbol Editor or Orchestra Canvas, go to your animation dropdown and you'll find alarm border animation. The configuration is especially easy when you're working with objects in application server and system platform, 
Simply map it to the object that you're interested in the alarm border responding to. Automatic alarm aggregation also allows for overview symbols and navigation badges like these. These symbols give an alarm summary for each reactor, showing the number of alarms in each severity. The overview then aggregates all three areas and totalizes the number. As an operator drills down, he can easily see that reactor 31, for example, may need his attention first, as it has an alarm in the highest severity and the most number of alarms. This alarm aggregation is built into every level automatically in system platform. Here's an example again of several reactor units and their alarms aggregating up to areas and groups based on the plant model in system platform. You'll also find that the same global settings for alarm severity are used in new alarm clients. Here's an updated alarm client that features the new plant model for filtering as well as severity indication based on the number and highlighted color. Alarm clients and alarm borders for both historical alarming and runtime alarming will soon be available. Another major change in alarming for System Platform 2014 is in the way we historize alarms. Compared to previous releases, System Platform 2014 now uses methods more similar to process history. For process data, there were features behind the scenes that allowed application server to talk to historian server and store your process data into history blocks. This also allowed you to take advantages of features like redundancy and store and forward, but previously we used different methods to store and historize alarms. This has changed in System Platform 2014. Now we utilize more of the same infrastructure for process data as for alarm data. For customers using Application Server in System Platform 2014, you'll now find a new alarm database in your historian. It's called the A2 Alarm DB. This is where your alarm history will be stored, and it means that you now have an alternative to Alarm DB Logger. You no longer have to remember how to write an alarm query. You'll also be able to take advantages with alarms of the same store and forward and redundancy features that were previously available with process history. In case you're wondering, the new alarm database will not require any additional tag count. If you have a free 32 tag historian, you could historize your entire galaxy of alarms with no added tag count. This change also means that setting up the historization of your alarms is much easier. Let's take a look. Remember our priority mapping window? You'll go to the same place to historize your alarms. That's Galaxy Configure Alarm Priority Mapping. Now setting up the historization of your alarms is as simple as selecting checkboxes. Instead of choosing alarms to historize by area, you'll now choose by priority. For events, you'll be able to choose based on the type of event. You'll still enable history in the same way inside the application engine. Which area alarms go to which historian will be based on the historian connection set up in the application engine and which areas are assigned to that engine. But this menu is the only menu you need to globally choose which alarms to historize. You can choose all four priorities or select which ones you want. We hope you'll check out these new features in System Platform 2014 and explore how they can help with your alarm management.